Hey, welcome everybody and let's get started. So for today's video, I'm going to be using Mailer Lite. This is actually my first time using it. I normally use MailChimp, but I wanted to give it a go. I just needed a place to store my email sign up. Since we're going to be using this with React, we're actually going to be using their API and I'm going to show you how it works. Now I've already created a new free account so you can sign up from here and then that will lead you to the dashboard. Once you sign up, make sure that you go through the sign up process, confirm your account and your domain name. For some reason, I can't confirm my account yet. It's probably the way I'm writing my emails, but I'm going to do that later on. And then if you go to account settings super quickly and then click on domain names, make sure that you authorize your domain name as well. As you can see, mine is uh, authenticated. Now let's go back to the dashboard and let's click on integrations here on the left corner and from here we're looking for the mailer light api here it is so click on use and as you can see i created an api token last night from here we need to create a new api token so let's generate new token and give it a name i'm going to call mine react app and then accept the terms and conditions and click create the token copy the token somewhere i'm going to paste it into notepad for now it's quite a large token. Make sure that you save it because we're going to need it later on in the tutorial. I'm going to minimize this. Let's close this and let's quickly look at the Mailer Light JSON API. As you can see, some of the basics here is that we need the content type to be application JSON, accept application JSON, and the base URL is https column slash slash connect.mailerlight.com. If you scroll down a little bit further, you'll see that you can create different groups for different signups. For example, I've created one which is called just website and uh, just so I know where the users are signing up from. But of course, you can create more groups and this is going to be the ID which we can use later on. It's not required, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. And from here, you'll be able to find the documentation here, which we're going to look into later on. Let's start with our project. So first of all, I've already created a brand new Vit plus React project here, as you can see and it's already running in the background. So I'm going to go to source and then app.jsx and let's remove the logos from here. We're going to use the use state, so I'm going to leave it. And then from here, let's remove the first count here and then let's remove everything from here. So all the divs like that, just make sure that you have an empty return element here. Save them and all applications should be blank. And super quickly, I'm going to go to the app.tss and remove pretty much everything except the root. So let's remove everything. And the design of this project is not going to be great, but, but uh, at the end, I'm going to show you what I did on my project to save a little bit of time and make it look a little bit more presentable. So I'm going to actually copy a little bit of CSS. It's super minimal and paste it. So it's basically a form, input and a button. I'm resetting the margin, resetting the padding, the border. I'm putting the form family to Arial. I'm setting the box size into border box. And for the input, in fact, I'm going to re remove this like so and put all input uh, to have the, a little bit of padding, a border and a width of 300. And for the submit button for form, we just have a background color, border, color of white, border of none, cursor, and I'm resetting the border radius. That's it. Super simple. Save this and let's close it. All right, let's start with the basics. First of all, we need to create our form. So I'm going to do a new form and close it. Here is a form. And inside the form, we're going to have two elements. The first one being the input of the email. So input of type email. And we can actually uh, self-close this for now and save it. Here is our email input. And now we need a button in order to submit the form. So let's do a button. And this is going to have the type of submit. And then inside the button, we can put something like subscribe. Save it. And here it is. The layout isn't looking the best. Maybe we can make it like so. Here we go. That's much better. Now, when we press the button here, you'll be able to see that the actual page refreshes, as you can see. And we we'll need to solve this. When we press the subscribe button, uh, we can deal with the form data. So inside the function up here is where we're going to create all function that handles the submit. So in order to do this, let's do const and I'm going to keep it very generic and I'm just going to put handle submit for the name. And then this is going to be equals an asynchronous function and we can grab the event and then a narrow function like so open curly brackets and we can put the logic inside here. Now, as I showed you when I click on this, the browser refreshes here, which is something that we don't want because we're using React. We want to have a nice experience. And in order to fix this, we can just use the event dot and then prevent the full. 
prevent the fault function and this should prevent the default behavior of the form but we need to attach this handle submit on our form and in order to do this we can just put on submit and then we use the function name inside here save and now if i click on subscribe our website doesn't refresh anymore and you can also do something like console.log and then put ok for example so now if i do right click inspect go to console and if i click subscribe you'll be able to see that we're getting ok without refreshing the page now the next mission is to grab the value from the input so in order to do this we're going to be using use state i've already got use state inserted but if you don't just make sure that import it in order to use this we're going to do a const and i'm going to create an email email and in order to be able to update this email we do set email like so and then this is going to be equals use state and the use state is basically the value of the email which is going to be empty like so perfect now what i want to achieve is every time we type inside the box we need to grab the value so we can insert it inside here inside the handle submit and send it to the mail light and in order to do this we need to give it a value on the input and the value is going to be email which is this here and i also want to make sure that it changes every time we type so what i'm going to do i'm going to put this on another line here just so it's easier to see and this is going to have on change and then this is going to have an event and this is what's going to give us the properties of this input so in this case we're going to do an arrow function like so and set email which is how we update the email from here we're using set email and now we just put the value by doing e dot target and then the target is value which is this here basically Cool. Now, in this point, we should be able to get the value from the email and you can do something like console log email instead of OK and that should work. So if I do inspect and then let's do rad subscribe, oops, let's go to console. And because this is set to email, the default behavior of the browser is looking for an ad sign here. And what you can do for now is either remove this either comment this out or just put an email i guess but save this uh, because it might get in a way of testing so i'm going to put rad and then subscribe and as you can see we're getting the value of rad and now i'm going to put rad123 and we're getting rad123 which is great let's remove this because we don't need it and now we can actually do a fetch and post some data to the mail light api in order to do this super quickly if we go back to the documentation here and if we click here documentation it should lead you to the website and they should probably have a massive button here of api reference but here it is anyway i keep searching for it from here there are a couple of things that i want to mention first of all because this is a custom form ideally you do need to prevent spam and for this later on i'm going to be using recapture but also if you go to authentication you do need to set up authorization bearer token with your api key which i'm going to show you how to do Otherwise, you're going to get a message that you're not authorized here, as you can see. And if I scroll down to subscribers and then list all subscribers, we're going to be using uh, create upset subscriber. This is what we're going to be using. So this is the URL that we need. We're going to be using post. And these are the requests that we can, we can do. We can post the email. This is obviously required, as you can see. And we can also post at a field, which I'm going to show you in a second. We're going to, we can post a group, status, subscribe that, and so on. I'm going to show you how this, how all this works. And in fact, here is an example. So you can post your email. You can post fields such as the name, the last name, and the group. Cool. Or multiple groups in this case. So I'm going to go back to my code here. And inside the handle submit, I'm going to do a try catch statement. Inside the try is where we're going to try to post some data. So I'm going to do const response equals await. And then this is going to be fetch. And then inside the fetch, we need, first of all, the URL. So in double quotes here, we can paste the URL, which I should have copied. Here it is without the post. Paste in here. And this is https column slash slash connect.mailerlight.com slash api slash subscribers that's what we need and now we can put comma and we can put the method inside here the method options so first of all the method is going to be set to post like so and then we need to set the headers now i already showed you some of the headers that they require earlier so the first uh, header that they require is the content type so content type 
and then this is going to be equals to application slash json comma and then this is going to accept and then this is going to be application dot json one more time slash json and then we need the authorization bearer token so inside here i'm going to do authorization and as the documentation says we need the bearer token so what i'm going to do here in slanted quote just because some of you might use an env file to store their token so what i'm going to do is bearer and inside here is where you post the token so the token i've already got i showed you how to get the api token earlier grab this and paste it inside here it's a bit long so i'm gonna go back and like that of course you can put this in an env file and just bring it in but uh for this video i'm just gonna leave it as it is as you can see pretty long key and now for the body this is where we actually post data so for the body i'm gonna do comma and then body and then we need to json stringify this so we can grab the fields from our form so json dot stringify and then we stringify the input fields for example the email so inside here this is email is by the way required without it obviously it won't work so email and we put the email like so from all form so this is the actual field inside uh, mail light and this is all form data that's it that's actually all you need but in this case i also want to use a group just to be a little bit more organized so i'm going to do groups and then this actually accepts multiple values in here but i'm just going to put one and my group number is going to be under if i go to back 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 if i go to my integrations api tokens if you scroll down here is my group this is the website group that i've created you can create more um but yeah and here's the id so i'm going to grab this this is where i want to group my emails and paste it here save that's pretty much it one thing that we can do straight away from here is to check for errors and we can do if we get if we don't get sorry response which is grabbed from here if we don't get response dot okay then what we can do is throw a new error like so and then just say fail to subscribe maybe try again later or something like that and also i want to console log the data so what i'm going to do is const uh, maybe put it as data equals await and then response.json just so we see what we get later on let me tidy things up for the catch we can do console.error and then we can pass the error from the catch statement here just so we can see what's going on okay cool this is all looking good let's test our application so far before we go any further so now first of all i'm going to test it with doubt email so i'm going to put rat once well, i'm going to put rat and then subscribe and as you can see failed to subscribe this is good it didn't uh, give us anything else and this is because i didn't console log the data so console dot log data and let's try again one more time so if i put subscribe one more time without an email fail to subscribe uh, ah, okay this is because we are finishing here okay we need to move this at the top here and save it so now if we subscribe we just write one more time okay perfect now we're getting a message which says the email field must be a valid email address which is great we can actually use this later on for our error message but this is great so now if i put hello at ruddy.dev for example and subscribe we should be able to see that we're getting data we're getting the data here which is a success by the way so here we're getting the email which is hello at ruddy.dev uh some other data like the click rate click count uh some fields they're all empty but you can also add them if you wish from here you can just add them from here and for the group as you can see we have the group that i've inserted and now technically speaking this actually worked and if i go back to the documentation we should be able to see that we get a new sign up so new subscribers today i did one earlier and then i just done another one 
just now, which means that we just had a subscriber into our mailing list. That's how simple it is, but it doesn't end there. First of all, we need to handle our error message and success message. We want somebody, when somebody signs up, to say thank you for signing up to the newsletter. And then if there is an error, just to tell the user what the error is. So let's do that next. Let's handle the error message first. So earlier, when I signed up without an email, it says email field must be a valid email address. Where we have the use state of email and set email, we can create another one. So I'm gonna copy this by doing all shift and down. And this is gonna be error message. I'm gonna copy this, paste it. I'm gonna put set error message with a capital error message like so. And this is gonna be empty as default. So now what we can do is if we get this, so this is gonna be basically data dot errors. If we, if we get this, we don't wanna continue and we wanna display a error message. We can do this, we can do this here, for example. And let's say if data dot errors, then we want to set the error. So in this case, we're going to be using the set error message in order to uh, insert the data inside error message. So I'm going to grab this. And then inside here, you can either write it manually, you can put something like email field is required, or we can just grab the one from here. And in order to grab it, this is going to be data, whoops, data question mark, just to check whether the value is there and then message like so, um, return. Okay, and now if you want to display this message, we can grab it from here, error message, and we can display it somewhere in our form, for example, maybe around here, and we can do curly bracket, error message, and then and and, and then, whoops, open a div or paragraph in this case, I'm gonna do, and then let's do a class name of success, uh, sorry, error, and then we can insert the message by doing curly bracket and error message. Cool. I don't know if I have a class name of error. One sec. I'm going to go to CSS. I do not. So I'm, what I'm going to do is dot error, color red, and then I'm going to do one for success. So dot success, color green. That will do the job. Save it. Okay. Let's go back. And now this should hopefully work. All right, if I save this and if I put rat, which is not a valid email address, and if I put subscribe, uh, fail to subscribe. Uh, okay, fail to subscribe. And this is because it's hitting this. We don't actually want this anymore. So I'm gonna remove it, save it. And let's do one more time, subscribe. And here we go. The email field must be a valid email address. And this comes from the MailerLite API. But as I said, you can change the message from here. Now we can also set the error message uh, here as well. So I can do set error message here. And then maybe I could just type this one and I'm gonna say fail to subscribe, please try again later. And that's cool. And now let's handle the set success message. First of all, I'm gonna go here at the top, copy this, and then this is gonna be success message. And then this is gonna be set success message with capital S and we should be good. What we can do now is copy the same thing here for the error message. We can copy a success one. So success message message. No success message and copy the success message inside here. And this is success like so. And this should be green. Okay. Uh, we do need to reset them, but let's have a look whether if I do hi at ready the UK and submit uh, yep, that's working, but we didn't set the success message. So we're going to have to do this. So set success message just after the error while we check the error and then we can just set it to whatever we like. I'm going to put, thank you for joining our newsletter and save it. All right, let's try one more time. Subscribe. Thank you for joining the newsletter. But now if I do an error, remove the email, we're going to get both of them here which means that we can, we need to reset them. So what I'm going to do is every time you click on the subscribe button, I'm actually going to reset both of them. So I'm going to do set error message and set 
success message and just reset them like that. Save. And now if you do subscribe, we only get the email. Uh, okay, well, that, that's all looking good. Technically, you could combine those two messages and have a uh, different type, maybe success and error, and so on. All right, one thing that I spotted just now is that we don't have a placeholder for input, so you can just do placeholder and then you can do email, something like that, and we get the email. You can also uh, put the type here again to be email and you can also put this as required if you wish to and now we shouldn't be able to uh, submit without having an email which is good now the next bit let's go back to the documentation super quickly and let's click on the developer here api reference and then if we click on authentication and if you go back to the bottom here you'll be able to see that since this is a custom form it's up to you to make sure that you're using the best practices uh, for their terms and conditions and anti-spam policy at the moment nothing really stops the bot to absolutely spam your input and unfortunately as much as i hate recapture it's a good way of actually stopping spam and i'm going to show you how we can set that up super quickly so first of all we need the recapture api key Google, search for recapture, click on this, click on v3 admin console. And from here, you need to add a new website. As you can see, I was playing with my website yesterday. And now if you click on create from here, make sure that you add the URL I'm going to put for my website. It was explorer.com and then the challenge is going to be set to v2 in this case and then i'm going to be using a not a robot checks box here make sure that you add your url so the explorer.com and i don't know whether i need to add www let's add anyway add and now let's submit this okay this should give you two keys one is going to be the side key in the and the other one is the secret key so make sure that you make a note of this and let's go back to React. For this, I'm actually going to use a package called React Google Recapture. As you can see, it has a lot of weekly downloads. It's quite a good one. And we need to basically install this. So I'm gonna stop my process here. And let's install it. npm install dash dash save react dash google dash recapture. Press enter and now let's rerun the project npm run dev. Okay, from here you'll be able to see how they do it. Basically, you import it, so we might as well grab this and then you can insert the recapture in your form. And I think they have a better example around here. Yeah, I think I'm going to be using this basically. Let's look into it. At the top, we need to import this. So import recapture from Google. And now we need the reference which they had in the documentation. So const recapture ref. And I believe that this is getting the reference of the form. So we're going to do react dot dot create ref. Like so. We need to get the form value. This is also from the documentation. So let me have a look super quickly. Yeah, so we are basically doing this. On the form submit, we insert in this in here. You can also console log the value if you wish to see what's happening behind the scenes. And we need to insert the recapture inside our form as they have in the documentation there. So the way I'm gonna do this is maybe here at the above the button. It doesn't really matter as long as it's inside the form. So this is going to be like recapture like so. And this is going to have the reference of recapture ref, which is here. Paste it. And then this is going to have a side key. And now the side key is the one from Google. So I'm going to go back to Google super quickly and copy the side key. Copy paste it inside here. Make sure that you close the recapture. It's a self-closing tag. I'm going to do view world wrap just so you can see how it looks full screen. Save it. Um, what does it? It's screaming at me. Reference React is not defined. Okay, maybe we need to import React as well. So, 
All right, so at the top here, we need to import React. So we already have from React. So I'm going to do outside the use state, I'm going to do React, comma. And now, hopefully that should, that message should be gone. Nice. Okay, the message is gone. We're getting the capture localhost is not in the list of supported domain names. If you click on this and scroll down one second, let me find it. Yeah. Okay. If you click on that and then scroll up a little bit, you should be able to see that they have a, an example side key for your local development. So at the moment we can't really use localhost. We, we won't be able to test it, even though that I've supplied the sidekick here. You do need to put this when you publish your website, but if you want to test locally, you can use this one here. So I'm going to copy it as we have currently development, but make sure that you replace this once you publish your website and paste it. And now look at this. If I save it, nothing happens. Maybe I need to refresh. This recapture is for testing purposes only. Please report to the site admin if you've seen this. Awesome. We should be able to test this now. But at the moment, nothing stops us from submitting this form. And what we need to do, first of all, we need to check whether this recapture is submitted and then we can do the try catch. That's how I'm thinking about it. So if we do, if we don't have recapture value from here, then we can set an error. And to set the error, we set, where is it? Sorry, set error message. And then we put something like, please verify the capture. Like so. And then if this works, we can do else. And then we wrap the whole try catch. So try catch, where is it, where is it? Try catch finishes around here. We wrap the whole try catch inside curly brackets, save this, and hopefully this should work. So now, uh, even if I do, just to show you, we can do alert, please verify the capture, just, just to show you. And then if I click subscribe, first of all, we can't because of the email. So I'm going to put hi at ruddy.co.uk. And now if I click subscribe, capture ref is not defined. So this is because, okay, it looks like I've maybe misspelled this. So I'm going to copy this capture ref and I'm going to paste it here. All right. So that needs to match that, but also I need to update the form. And it's that. Okay. My fault. I think I misspelled it. Cool. So those three need to match, save them. And now let's try again. All right. We have the capture. Let's put hi at ruddy.co.uk. I'm not going to put the capture. Let's click subscribe. Please verify the capture, which is great. So the capture wasn't verified and press OK. And also we're getting the message. Please verify the capture. Definitely remove the, the alert because it's annoying. And now let's try it with the capture and see whether we can submit. So hi at ruddy.co.uk. I'm going to click on I'm not a robot and then subscribe. Thank you for joining on newsletter. Amazing. So that's it. That's pretty much it. Everything is working. As I promised earlier, uh, I'm going to show you what I've done for my website super quickly before we finish. On my website, I use Tailwind CSS and I found a cool form that I copied and pasted from here. So blocks and then I believe newsletter maybe. Here we go. Newsletter sections, copy. And basically, I copied this on my website. And all we need to do is just let me show you. Copy the code. And here it is. All you need to do. If you copy this and you have Tailwind CSS. So the difference will be here is the form. And all you need to do is paste this in your project and make sure that you update the, the form action here. So that will be this one here. Obviously move your messages inside as well. If you wish to on submit, make sure that your input has the same properties as this one here. So potentially just move this inside and copy the type value placeholder on change and should be good to go. And this is basically how my ended up looking like. I hope that you found this useful. 
Thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.